Hi again, welcome to Engineer's Mindset with another amazing question on two dimension. It says three, cable, three forces are applied to the bracket as shown. Determine the range of values for the magnitude of force P such that the resultant of the three forces does not exceed 2.4 kN. So the resultant of the three forces have already been given to us. So we'll have the bracket. Okay, so we'll have this force 0.8 kN inclined at what 60. We'll have three kN force. Okay, the angle between this and this is 90 degrees, and then we'll have a force P. Now, we solve this problem first of all by solution. We introduce what is called a free body diagram. FBD stands for free body diagram. It's a diagram representing all the force acting on a system. That's what a free body diagram is. So in two dimension is simply what your graph. That's what it is in two dimension. Your free body diagram is simply your graph. So all you need to do is what plot out your x and y. Um, component and represent what you have on the system. So first of all, we have a force P directly to the horizontal. So directly to this horizontal, we have a force, and this force is what P. We have P. Then inclined at an angle to the horizontal, we have a force of 0.8 kilonewtons. So from this point, okay, we have a force of 0.8 kilonewtons. 0.8 kilonewtons at an angle of 60 degrees. Then. Okay, so now let's draw an imagine, imaginary line from here. If you draw an imaginary line from here, notice that this is this is what just like the graph that we have. If you draw an imaginary line from here, okay, so this is our x, this is our y. So this is like the first, these are first quadrant. So if here is 60, automatically from here to here is 30 degrees. So if here is 60 degrees, it means that here is 30 degrees, which are first quadrant. And again, remember that from this point to here is 90. So if from here to here is 30, that means from here to this point is what 60 degrees. So it means from here to where this force, 8 kN force, is, this 3 kN force is acting, is actually what? 30 degrees. So from here to this point is 30 degrees. So 30, sorry, 60 degrees. So 60 plus 30 will give us 90, which is what we have here from this point to this point, 90 degrees. So here is 30, here is 60. So these are 3 kN force. These are three kilonewtons for so that's a free body diagram. So we have represented the information from this bracket into what a free body diagram. So it's not easy for us to solve using two dimension. So the first thing we'll do is this let's call this to be force one, and let's call this three kilonewtons force to be force two, and let's call this F this P to be force three. This is the third force. So we'll do the same thing we'll do. We know summation of I am um, first of all, we'll do S component of force. S component of force so f1 of x so resolve f1 in the x like i told you hold the tip of the arrow pull it till it meets the x line this is our x line this is our positive x this is our negative x okay so we'll pull it till it meets the s line if you pull it watch the arrow this is the arrow like this so if you keep on pulling it at this point the arrow will also point towards your right so it's positive and again it passes through what angle 60 degrees so that means f1 of x is simply what 0.8 kilo newtons. 0. Now you don't need to convert to kilo. You don't need to convert. The reason why is because the two forces are in kilo, and the resultant force that is given to us from the equation is also in kilo newtons. So whatever we have for p automatically becomes in kilo newtons. So you don't need to convert. So you have 0. 0.8 times since it passes through 60 degrees. So cos 60. So this is 0. 0.8. Cos 60 is 0. 0.5. So it means that component of force is what 0. Um, 0.4 kilo newtons. Okay, so F1 of X is 0.4 kN. We'll try F2 of X. F2 of X is F2. If here is 60 degrees, automatically here is 30 degrees. Because angle on the quadrant is 90. So if here is 60, that means here is 30. So we'll pull this force, 3 kN force towards meet the X line. This is our negative, this is our X line. If you pull the force, notice the arrow direction. If you pull this force limit here, this arrow will still point towards the left. So this force is a negative force. The arrow will point towards the left. So it is first that this force is a negative force. So minus 3 times. And again, it passes through what? this angle, 30. So it's going to be times cosine of that angle. It passes through. So this is times cos 30. So this is equal to minus 3. Cos 30 is 0 0.8660. Okay, so... So 3 times 0 0.80 will give us approximately minus, call this 2.60 in kilo newtons. So F3x, F3x, now F3 is P, and notice that F3 is directly on the X component, it's already 
a component in the x direction so it doesn't have any it's not inclined at any angle so it's really on the x component so f3 s remains what p so f3 s remains p it doesn't change then summation of x component force okay so that's summation f of x so we'll add them together we we'll have the first which is 0 0.4 0 0.4 okay the next is minus 2 2.6 then plus p okay so summation f of x that implies that summation f of x is now equal to so we evaluate that so we evaluate 0 0.4 minus 2.4 okay sorry um 3 cos 60 gave us 2.6 minus 2.6 so we evaluate 0 0.4 minus 2.6 and we have um 2.2 okay we have minus 2.2 Okay, so from here, this is actually minus 2.2 plus P. So we can write the equation, you can P minus 2.2. So it now means that summation F of X is simply P minus 2.2 in Newtons, in kilonewtons. So you keep this aside. We'll now move to the Y component force. Y component force. So we'll start with F1, Y. Starting with F1, Y. Okay, so you hold F1, pull it to meet the vertical line. This is our Y, remember. Positive Y if it points up also. If you pull this to meet the vertical line, check the arrow. Pull it till it meets the vertical line. The arrow still points up also. It's a positive force. And you move all the way from this point to this point, which means you cover this angle 30 degrees. So it's going to be this cos 30. So we have 0 0.8 cos 30. So this is 0 0.8 times cos that's and this 0 0.8 cos that is 0 0.8660 so what do we have so approximately we have 0 0.69 kilo newtons okay the next is f2 y so we resolve f2 in the y so f2 is here so hold the tip of the arrow also watch the direction of the arrow pull this till it meets the vertical line notice that the direction will still be pointing upwards and again it passes through what 60 degrees you move from here to this point so it passes through 60 degrees the direction is upwards so it's positive so f2y is simply what 3 kilonewtons times cos 60 that's 3 times cos 60 0 0.5 so this is actually 1.5 kilonewtons now f3y is actually what zero because for P, P is already on the X axis. It's not on the Y axis. It doesn't have anything to do with X, Y axis. So P is already on the Y, on the X axis. So F three Y is zero. So there is no component for F three Y. Okay. So summation of vertical forces. Summation of Y components. That's summation F of Y is now equal to. So you add just like you did in the first case. So we have 0 0.69 plus 1.5. So that will give us that will give us approximately 2.2 2.2 kilo newton. So this summation of vertical forces. Now recall that resultant. R is equal to the square root of summation f of x plus summation f of y all square. So if we take the square of both sides, it means that we can have R square to be equal to summation f of x squared plus summation f of y squared. So this is what it means. And from the question, we are given that if the resultant force does not exceed 2.4. So we've already been given the value of the resultant force. So f r already is f arrow but f arrow must not exceed what 2.4 kilometers so in place of f arrow simply put what 2.4 squared 2.4 squared is equal to summation f of x we have summation f of x to be p minus 2.2 so this p minus 2.2 all squared plus summation f of y Summation f of y happened to be 2.2 squared, so 2.2 all squared. Okay, so 2.4 squared 
okay so 2.4 square is 5.76 so this is 5.76 equal to so we can expand this bracket to have p minus 2.2 to make it easier expand the bracket p minus 2.2 and plus 2.2 square is 4.84 2.2 square is 4.84 so we have this so this 5.76 to be equal to so let's expand this bracket p times p gives us p square p times minus 2.2 is minus 2.2 p minus 2.2 times p is minus 2.2 p okay minus 2.2 by minus 2.2 is giving us plus 4.84 then plus 4.84 Okay, so we have 5.76 p square minus 2.2 minus 2.2 p will give us minus 4.4 p. Okay, plus this will give us so 4.84 plus 4.84 is 9.68. So we have this. So we can collect like things from here. collect like time so send this part of the equation to this side if we do that we'll have zero left here let 5.76 be taken to this side of the equation okay so we'll have p square minus 4.4 p okay plus 9.68 plus 9.68 then we'll send 5.76 over remember here is plus 5.76 so if you cross it over and equal to and it changes to minus so we'll have minus 5.76 so we are left with zero and that's our equation so this is p square minus 4.4 p plus 9 okay so 9.68 minus 5.72 9.68 minus 5.72 that give us 3.52 equal to zero so this is now a quadratic equation <coughs> so using <coughs> the general formula So the general formula is simply p is equal to minus b plus or minus square root b square minus 4ac all over 2a so of course you know what your a is from here a is equal to coefficient of p square which is one the coefficient of p square is one b is equal to the coefficient of p which is minus 4.4 so b is minus 4.4 c is equal to coefficient of the constant which is what 3.52 3.52 so we'll now put them into this equation we'll now have that p is equal to minus b b is minus 4.4 so minus minus 4.4 plus or minus square root minus 4.4 squared minus 4 a is 1 c is equal to 3.52 all over 2 a a is 1 so p is equal to minus minus is plus so we'll have 4.4 plus or minus square root so we'll compute 4.4 minus 4.4 square remember when you square minus sign it becomes plus so we'll compute that and see what we we'll have so minus 4.4 square is 19.36 and this is minus so we'll do 4 times 3 point 4 times 1 times 3.52 that give us 14.08 all over 2 so p is equal to 4.4 plus or minus square root so 19.36 minus 14.08 give us 5.28 divided by 2 so we'll find the square root of 5.28 so that implies that p is equal to 4.4 plus or minus square root of 5.28 that's approximately 2.30 all over 2 so therefore p can either be 4.4 plus 2.30 all over 2 or 4.4 minus 2.30 all over 2 that implies that p is equal to so this is 6.70 divided by 2 or or 4.4 minus 2.30 is 2.10 all over 2 okay so that simply implies that p is equal to so 6.70 divided by 2 that's 3.35 or 2.1 divided by 2 
uh, give us 1.05 hence the range of value of force p uh, is p exists um, between 3.5 so 3.35 uh, p is equal to 3.35 kilonewtons or p is equal to 1.05 kilo newton so that is the answer all right thank you very much for that wonderful question if you have any question you can send in your questions in the comment section like the video if you find it interesting share it to your friends for more i'll see you in the next video thank you